It was a story that shook the foundations of English sport. My comments have always been based on what I felt were racist comments to both myself and Juju Spence. That is the extent to which my comments have been and how the FA handled the evidence around those comments. It was one woman's word against the original owners of the world's biggest sport. If I wrote a statement, um, a favourable statement saying that the FA are not institutionally racist, that they would think about releasing that money. In 2016, Enya Luko accused the former women's coach Mark Sampson of racism and bullying, and that the FA failed to conduct a thorough investigation. Many thought it would destroy her 17-year-long professional career. <laughs> but two years on, she has rebuilt her career in a different place. And she invited Beyond the Game to her new home, Turin. Yeah, I think there's part of me that felt that... I felt like I was in a pressure cooker for quite a long time. Um, and even now, when I go back to London, you know, Sometimes people recognise me for that case. I'm, I've been defined by it, if you like, beyond football. Um, so there's an escapism to coming to Italy and, and not being known for that reason necessarily. Um, but I think I dealt with all of that in England um, and kind of got over that hump of feeling like I was in a fish, fish tank. Well, you've been decorated and um, celebrated for um, your bravery. Uh, how does it feel to know that you are inspiring a lot of people to actually just stand up for themselves, to speak yeah. their truths? Yeah, honestly, Sam, like when I was going through it all, I didn't think about the impact it would have on other people. I just did what I felt was right, and I find it easier to tell the truth. So I don't really see it as bravery. Um, but I guess in a world where there's so much secrecy and you know, there's so much kind of propaganda and sort of spinning of the truth. Truth is very much something that is um, valued. Standing up for yourself is valued because many people just keep quiet. So I understand now, I think looking back in hindsight, I understand the power of what I did. But going through it, I, I didn't. I just felt like it was time to just kind of clear the air. After six years playing for Chelsea, a new challenge awaited Eni, and that challenge was abroad. She joined Italian giants Juventus this summer, and it looks like she settled into her new life as a Brit abroad. It feels good, and I'm glad I look settled, um, because that's kind of the aim, you know, for me to come here and feel like it's home and adapt. Um, I think the biggest thing is, is adapting to the things that we take for granted back home in London. Um, the team have been great, you know, the girls have been great. Um, the, you, the football's always challenging, particularly when you lose and you, you don't get results. Um, but at the same time, you know, for me it's beyond the field. It's, it's about growing as a person, it's about meeting new people, speaking a new language, challenging myself to grow and, and develop um, as a human being and I think this is a perfect opportunity to do that. There's a coaching aspect that is completely different to England. I've experienced things at Juventus in four months that I've never experienced in my career and I've been playing for 17 years. The coaching is more technical. In the warm-up you're using the ball a lot more. Just things that aren't necessarily done in England. For me as a kid, as a technical player, as a kid, it was coached out of me. I was always told this is not the any show, you know, so pass, move, the ball, move the ball on, don't, don't take too many touches. But actually as a kid, if you take too many touches, you'll learn later on to release the ball, but you get out of situations a lot better because you've got the ball skills to manipulate the ball. So here in Italy, it's, it's probably more encouraged to be more technical. I've always wanted to play in Europe, but Never felt I would, because I thought I'd retire at Chelsea. Mm. But the opportunity obviously came up. Um, so, but I, but I do think it's an important thing for English football to consider in general. I think English football has been a little bit snobby in the sense that because of the Premier League, everybody felt like staying in England was the be all and end all. This is the men's and the women's. This is the men's and the women's. But for me, actually, you, you gain more 
as an all-round footballer by going abroad. So if you look at someone like Jadon Sancho, nobody would have known Jadon Sancho had he not probably gone abroad to Borussia Dortmund, done well. And people go, oh, he's English. Um, and I think that's inspiring for other young lads who are at big clubs. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, take, take him for example. He could easily crack it in Italy or Germany or Spain, but actually he's probably not thought any further of going on loan to a Crystal Palace because they're in the Premier League. But actually Ruben Loftus-Cheek playing for a bigger club abroad probably will, will put him in a better position to play for Chelsea regularly. You've clearly come out of it the other end. You're, yeah, I feel like yeah, you've got a you know, new life in Turin, you're a columnist, mm -hmm. uh, you've just had uh, a brilliant stint at the World Cup uh, for your punditry. I mean, what else is on the list? What else do you need to do? Yeah, I mean, for me, w what else is just um, doing well at Juventus, um, doing more stuff in the media um, than I can, you know, hopefully working at the Women's World Cup next year in France, which, again, I think is going to be incredible. Um, and as I said, off the pitch, just developing a, a you know, a lifestyle that is... Um, that feeds my soul, really. Well, you just said that um, that you plan to work at the Women's World Cup yeah. uh, next year. I mean, do you have any plans to retire or do you really, really want to carry on playing? Yeah, it's, it's definitely something I've thought about, I'm not going to lie, um, because I think when you're out of the national team system for such a long time, which I have been, two years is a long time, um, plus having 100 caps, anyway um, there's a kind of peace and fulfillment I feel about the national team I don't feel bitter about it I don't feel like I long I'm longing for it of course where if you play well and you get picked for England it's it's an honor to be picked for England but it's not something that I feel I have any gripe over so if it's not meant to be and I'm not selected for the World Cup I'm not selected for the World Cup and I think at that point, it's probably time to make a decision about sort of drawing the line under it so it doesn't become a recurring question, if you like. Uh, finish this sentence for me. Any Aluko is? Oh, um, just complete. I feel, I, feel, I feel kind of quite complete as a person in the sense that when you go through adversity and come out the other end of it, and then genuinely kind of enjoy life. I think things don't affect me that, that used to anymore. Um, so I feel quite complete. I feel at peace with myself. Mm -hmm.